for primary, we don't get to choose subjects. As a teacher, you teach everything. So who, who reads map when 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 we're in Africa? <laughs> Nobody reads map. But then you have to come and learn how to read it because you have to teach the children how to use a map. Is there history, UK history? You know? <laughs> that's the that's the challenge. That's the challenge. It is UK history. And it ah. is UK geography. <laughs> so ah. <laughs> for those of us who are African, there is a whole to be honest, I don't like teaching this topic because you're talking about the Battle of Hastings, you're talking about the Celts, you're talking about this. These are things that I don't know about. You have to have good behavior management skills. Seriously. If you can't, then you can't hold the class. <laughs> An aspiring UK teacher, you are going to love this interview. You are interviewed a lady called Boma. She runs the channel Dwelling Oak. Okay, she is a UK teacher, but she's from Nigeria. I know I've already interviewed a teacher on the channel. If you haven't watched it, I'll advise you watch it. Okay, she's a white teacher, and I thought that mm, if I could get like a black teacher or an African teacher or a foreign teacher, somebody who's not from the UK, to share their experience working as a black teacher in the UK, I'm sure most of my viewers will resonate with this person because most of my viewers. Are black people i'm sure maybe they'll learn a lot from that video as well since you loved the first one in the first place she's a primary teacher here in the uk guys this lady has so many gems and she shared so many very very important things in this interview she is actually a permanent teacher and she's been teaching for over eight years she spoke about some of the things that you have to be aware of as an african teacher coming to the uk some things that you should do so that you don't get into trouble she spoke about interview questions to expect how to deal with very difficult students and a whole lot of things honestly even me as a nurse i've actually learned so much from this interview it is so long that i've actually grouped it into different different portions so that you know you can just watch the parts that you like okay so check out my teacher's playlist and i'm sure you enjoy it by the way this video is probably sponsored by lemonade finance yes so lemonade finance if you don't know is a mobile app that allows you to transfer money from the uk canada and the us to 10 different african countries at no charge at all yes no transfer fee you can send money from the uk canada and the us to countries like ghana nigeria senegal cameroon tanzania benin ivory coast to rwanda at no transfer charge as a matter of fact as well if you use a referral code nanel for your first transfer above 100 pound you get 10 percent of the money you're transferring back okay so if you send 100 pound you get 10 pound back if it's in 200 pound you get 20 pound back but it's capped at 50 pounds you can download lemonade finance app whether you use an android or whether you use an ios and i'll leave a link in the description so that you can easily download trust me ever since I discovered Lemonade Finance, that's what my friends and myself have been using. They are very reliable, very convenient, okay? So download Lemonade Finance, send money to friends and family in any of these 10 African countries and let me know what you think, okay? Thank you so much, Lemonade Finance, for sponsoring today's video. I know you're Nigerian. Mm. Exactly, I'm Nigerian. My name is Boma. Boma. I'm mother of three and primary school teacher here in the UK, living here with my family. So um, that, that's basically a summary of me. You don't have a Nigerian accent. Why is that? I don't know. I have an Nigerian accent. Can't you hear it? No. <laughs> really? That's yeah. strange. That yeah. is very, very strange. Yeah. I don't know. If I don't have hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the children I teach don't 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 think so, though. Do. <laughs> oh, I see. I I see. So. Oh, obviously they wouldn't think so. So you were not born in the UK, you were born in Nigeria. No, not at all. No, not at all. I was born in Nigeria and I came over here um to join my husband. So how long have you been in the UK? about this year is going to be 16 years were you a teacher back in nigeria no i wasn't a teacher but i used to have like little um groups so i have children who come in and i tutor them and i have my siblings anyway um one out of nine well eight and then one was adopted so i have younger ones i used to do the tutoring for them and teach them and all of that and friends children as well so that's what i used to do um with, in, in regards to teaching when i was in nigeria so you said you moved in to join your husband like was he coming as a, a doctor a nurse a student like no my husband came here to do his uh, phd okay and then i joined him after that so okay so when you joined him and then you decided to go into teaching in the uk mm, i joined him and then i did other things um at that point in time because i am um, when i was in nigeria I've always wanted to go into teaching anyway. I had two things I wanted to do, become an economics or um, go into teaching. And then I went to University of Nigeria for a bit where I did music. And my aim was that after that, I would go into school and teach music. Uh, but then I left Nigeria and came over here. 
um, I decided to do other things just to get to know the place and all of that. So I went into care. Uh, I did that for a bit and I thought, okay, you know what, I want to move on and start advancing my career, just do something with myself. So I looked at options, what I, what I wanted to do. I love drawing then, not now. Um, I love drawing a lot. So I wanted to become an artist. So I said, okay, I'm going to go back to uni, um, do either become an artist or do fine arts in school or and maybe do teaching. So those two. So I started researching into the two. And for fine arts, there's quite a lot I needed. I needed a portfolio and all of that. And I didn't have any of those. Happens I didn't have any. I had some stuff back home in Nigeria, which I left because I just thought, you know what? These were just children, fantasy. I used to make a lot of comics when I was in Nigeria. When I was quite young, make a lot of comics. And people would read them actually like novels and stories. Um, so I left all of those back home in Nigeria. So when they were asking for a portfolio, I didn't have anything to show. And I didn't have time to start building a portfolio. So I said, you know what, since I have two options, I'm going to go into teaching then. So I went and I trained to become a teacher. And then ever since then, I have that's what I've been. So you didn't use your Nigerian qualification to teach in the UK? No, I didn't. Well, having said that, I did. The WAYEC, what we call the WAYEC SSE, they needed that in order to be able to know because some of the requirements, if you have a good grade in maths and English. Um, so, but enough for me to use it, it had to be converted. So they had to check if it met the UK standard of that. I, I think they've changed the name. It's UK Narik, but Narik. they've changed the name to something else. I don't know what it is now. Is now. So I, yeah, oh, so I used that. So you did the actors of your Wayek? Yes, of my Wayek only, because now I was going to do the three years. I had the option to do the three years or to do the one year. But I didn't want that because I didn't know anything about the teaching uh, curriculum and things like that in the UK at that time. Now, I had volunteered in schools, um, helping one day a week in schools. But apart from that, I didn't have any knowledge. And that volunteering, I didn't do it for too long, to be honest. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go in and do the three years one. So I'm, ha I'm going to have a bit more experience rather than the, because I have friends who've done the one year and they're like, oh, it's too much packed in one year, way too much. And I thought for someone who doesn't have a proper background in school here, it'd be better for me to go and do the three years. So I did the three years BA. And for that, you just need the WIEC, which, which is uh, the uh, GCSE equivalent. And then you also need to pass the math and English test, which you have to do here as a requirement for you to get into teaching. So those are the two things that I, I, I then did. The, the math and English, you will do while you're on the course. So when, once, once you get into the course, then you do the math and English. And if you pass that, then you can continue. But if you don't pass the math and English test, then you have to drop out uh, from the training. Um, so but those are the two things I needed at that time. Is it like really difficult math and English exam? It is not. It's, I think it's the equivalent of a grade six. I think GCSE or something like that. It's not, but the, the challenge with that is it's timed. It's a computer exam and it's timed. So within that short time, you have to do your maths and your English. Within the, and as, if you don't finish, the computer just shuts down. So I think it's more the panic rather than anything else. It's just usual basic maths, but the panic is what sets you going. And then you're fidgeting and you're fretting and simple things that you're supposed to do. You forget them. To be honest, I wrote, I wrote my English first time and I passed it once. I wrote my maths two times, well, three times, because on the third time, that was when I passed. Um, passed. It was just the, the, for me, the, the anxiety. That was what it was um, with the maths. So, and we had people who didn't pass it and they dropped out of the course. Um, so, but you needed to pass it and you had just three trials. After the tour time, you're locked out. You can't do it anymore. And that's that's the end of the road for you. So is that the same process for people that are already in the UK and want to go into teaching? Your process, is that still yeah. the same process? You have I, to get your WIEC or your GCSE, and then you'd have to write an English and Maths exam. After, yes. after doing the uh, ECTES or the NARIC, and then yeah. you have to an English and Maths exam. And then you do the three-year teaching program. Yeah, that's if you want to do the three years. If you want to do the one year, that's fine. For the one year, you need, I think, um, you need your undergrad degree for that one because it's more like a master's in a sense. You need a degree. Uh, so you need a, an undergrad degree to do the one year one. And mm -hmm. then, of course, your WIAC and all the other things they will ask for. Uh, but yes, it is. I don't know if they've changed the rules. I haven't, I haven't gone back to look if they've changed the the um, scrapping of the exams i don't know but i think i heard someone say still there but if you're in the uk this is what you need to do if you want to get into that route to the three years um teaching okay. and on that note let me also add that for those that are not in the uk and are watching me and want to come 
to the UK to teach. Now that the UK is saying they need teachers, I already have a video where I detailed four different routes that you can use to become a teacher in the UK. You can watch that video and then definitely one of the routes might favor you, your situation. And then you can, you know, start your journey on becoming a teacher in the UK. But for Boma, she was here already in the uk so her pathway was quite different however today we're going to ask her you know being an african teacher in the uk her experiences blah 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 so after the three-year program you applied for a teaching job and then you started teaching yes so you once you get the job you have a one year which is called the nqt year so that's like your induction year so even though you've done the training and everything you've you've passed and you've got your teacher number because we have a number like nurses um, so once you've gotten that and everything, then you can get apply for jobs. But once you get a job, you're considered a, a newly qualified teacher, so NQTS. So that's then for the you do that for one year, okay. and within that one year, there's lots of observations. They come to observe your teaching. They come to look at your they look at your lesson notes. You have constant training. Now for that one year, you can't take on any responsibility because as 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 teachers, you have responsibilities. Either you are you are a lead of a particular topic. So you, maybe you'll be a lead in maths. You're the one who's leading that maths for the entire school. You're looking out for things that will develop the maths curriculum for the school. But for that one year, you're not allowed to have any responsibilities because you're still training. Now, the NQT year, you can either pass it or you can fail it. So even after you've done your three years or one year and you've got a job and, you, and if they feel that you're not competent enough, competent enough to become a teacher after that one year, then they are going to ask you to leave the profession. So it's something that you can pass or you can fail. I have a second one. After that's not fair. I know. After all the stress, I haven't seen anyone who's failed it. I haven't heard, but we were told that you can either pass it or you can fail it. So it's up to you to work hard and prove that you can then carry on to become a teacher. Um, okay. Yeah. So after your induction year. As a NQT, as a newly qualified teacher, mm. what class were you teaching, and um, what subjects were you teaching? And is it a subject that you chose yourself, or was it just given to you, or what? So primary, sadly, we teach everything. We don't choose as a primary so teacher primary here in the UK. Is from what age to what age? So primary is from um, four to five. So depending on what. You know, the, the school system in the UK, depending on your birthday, that's when you get into school. So if you're born anything from January to um, August 30th, then you go to school when you're four. But anything from August 30th, uh, September 1st to December, you go to school when you're five. So depending on what year. So primary starts at reception, which is where you have the four to five year olds and then finishes at 10 to 11 year olds. So yeah, six. So for primary, we don't get to choose subjects we teach as a teacher you teach everything so you have your own class and you teach everything for that class um so that's how it's done in primary so i when i did my nqt year i was in a year one class and after my nqt year i remained in the year one class i didn't move i stayed there for about three years i call it four years but within that I had maternity leave for one year i had my baby and i had maternity leave for one year and then on coming back i was told i'm going to move to year six. Now I said I didn't want to do that because it was going to be a big jump for me and I had my child to look after and I've had all this plan which I've done for two or three years and I thought I have to start all over again. So I refused and I said to my head teacher, if I'm not going back to year one, I'm not coming back to the job. Uh, great, gratefully, she was, she was okay with that. So she let me go back to year one. So I continued there uh, for a bit and then moved on to another job and then now move on to another class. So when you say everything, what do you mean? Like as a primary teacher, you teach everything. What do you mean by everything? English, so you teach maths, English, geography, history, fine arts, DT, PE. Now some schools do PE. My school we have like two PEs in a class in a in a in a week for each class. So one of the PE is done by the teacher, and then the other one we have somebody who comes in to do the PE for the other one. So some school some classes might have the PE teacher do the cover boat but other classes you do so you teach pe you teach music you languages my school gets someone else to teach the languages but you teach everything every subject apart from languages and sometimes pe but everything you teach so if you mention geography and history 
Is that history? UK history? You know? <laughs> that's the that's the challenge. That's the challenge. It is UK history. And it ah. is UK geography. So, ah. <laughs> so that's 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 part of the job, isn't it? So there's a for those of us who are African, there is a whole to be honest, I don't like teaching this topic because uh, before I teach them, I have to read and read and read and try to understand what it is I'm going to teach. You're talking about the Battle of Hastings, you're talking about the cells, you're talking about this. These are things that I don't know about. So it's a whole lot of preparation for me for those topics, history and geography, because there are things that belong to the UK that I have to teach. So it is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Even Ghanaian history, I didn't like it. How much more where I'm not from? <laughs> so that's a, that's a, I know. <laughs> Ah. I know, right? But it's it's part of the job. So you just have to learn. You just I mean wow. sometimes you see me studying history as if I'm going for a history exam, but that's because I have to teach it. So I have to get used to it, understand it, so I can teach it to the children. Um, and then maps. Who who reads map when 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 Africa? <laughs> Nobody reads map. But then you have to come and learn how to read it because you have to teach the children how to use a map. Um, so these are all skills that you develop within time and you you study. And learn a bit more about them. Um, in the, in the, note, the I'll say those coming from Africa to teach um, uh, primary students. Uh, I wish you guys all the best. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, um, are you are you given training like the map reading for somebody who had no idea how to do it prior? Are mm. you are you guys giving like constant training? You know where you are trained on how to teach these kids these topics. Well, we are giving training constantly, um, but in terms of map reading and things like that, you just have to do those ones yourself. Um, you can look out for training outside of what the school provides that will help you develop, because to be honest, these things are quite normal to them. Um, so it's for me, who's the African, who's trying to learn these things. So if I want to learn it, then I have to go out of my way to maybe pay or go and look at YouTube videos or things like that to help me develop myself. But in terms of training, yes, we are given a lot of training for other subjects. So maths, English, there is constant training going on in schools um, to help the teacher. But, but, but I, haven't, I haven't really gone for any training for history or geography, to be honest. Um, I just learn on my own um, for those things. Yeah. So how long have you been a teacher? For how long? I have been for, this is going to be my eighth year now. Uh, but I had a bit of a gap in between, so where I where I took a bit of a teaching break after I had my my last child, um, I just wanted a bit more time because it's quite a full on job. It is a full on job, so I wanted a bit more time to bond with my little one. And at that time, my oldest was also going to start secondary, and I needed to be a bit more present for them. So I took two years career break within that time, and then got back into it after she went into primary school. The little one went to primary school. So you've taught primary, you've taught year one, and which other years have you taught? I've taught year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, and year six. The range, wow. apart from deception. Which one would you say is the toughest? The toughest is year six, if you ask me. Um, the older they get, the harder they become. Yeah. Not so okay. much. Yeah. <laughs> and not so much the curriculum, but having said that as well, the curriculum, because with every year, the curriculum gets a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging for the children but it's for me the attitude for me at that age than anything else um sometimes it's just a bit difficult because they are growing they are finding themselves they're developing and all of that so you have all of that then combined with okay i'm not going to listen to you now because i'm big enough to, so it's a bit challenging behavior wise the older they get but for me i i prefer the younger ones but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say no to any class. But if you ask me, I say I prefer the year one, two, three, and four. I saw this article on social media about this person who claims he was an African teacher who came to teach in the UK, and he says the students were very, very stubborn. You know, laughing at him, he could not shout at them. But he tried to report. It was. It's not so much like a, a story. Like I didn't. I didn't want to believe it. It was like <laughs> it was super strange. <laughs> Is it that bad? You know, you know where we are from. You know, mm. a child does not speak back to a teacher. You know, mm. but yeah, it can happen. And then you cannot hit them. 
Meanwhile, mm -hmm. in Africa, teachers are given like canes where they can actually mm -hmm. beat you and then even call your mother. And then mm -hmm. when you go, your mother also beat you on top of it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but he yeah, is a child. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. so what are the ways you use to correct the children? And in your opinion, is how tough is it dealing with, you know, that kind of situation here? Mm -hmm. Um, It is tough. I would say it is quite tough. And as you say, as an African, our upbringing is very different. And the way we do, uh, we do take out our, um, what do you call it? The way we kind of train our children things is quite different. So it is quite challenging because you're used to a certain kind of way and then you go in and you see something different. But all I would say is as an African, you just need to develop a lot of patience, to be honest. You just need to be very, very patient. It's not a job that you can go if you are easily offended or you easily flare up, you're going to be out in the jiffy. Um, you need serious patience because, yes, the children can and will talk back to you, especially the older ones. They will, they will not listen to you. You will speak to them and they will ignore you. So in all of that, you just need to understand and know, okay, when to stop. As a teacher, you need to understand when to stop, when to push, when to be strict and when not to be. So these are skills that you need to learn. And it's more important for an African because it is very easy for things to be misunderstood as an African. Um, so you need to be super, super careful. There are sometimes I just let the children win because I'm like, you know what? If I push any further, this is not going to go well. So I step back. I just step back. But one thing I would advise anyone is you need to be very, very, very strong in behavior management. Uh, there's a lot of courses out there. There's a lot of things that you can, articles, books, things that you can read and, and trainings that you can go for to help you with behavior management. Um, children then, uh, it's not the same with children we have now. There's a massive change a massive divide in terms of upbringing and everything it, it's it's a massive difference from what we know as africans and from just childhood childhood is changing in so many different ways so you have to have good behavior management skills seriously if you can't then you can't hold the class you you can't you can't hold and deal with the class so i would advise anyone go and get some courses, training, read. So even, even now, I sometimes I still go back and read things on behavior management to see how I can improve my skills or things that I can do better. Maybe if I have a, a child who's challenging in the class and I think that I've exhausted all of my behavior management skills and the child is still not cooperating, then I go, I go out and I search for things to help me uh, learn new ways to, 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 to help that child or to make that child cooperate with me. But as I said, there are times that you you lose. And there are times that you'll be strict. And there's at times you just say, you know what? I'll leave it there. So what are like the specific kind of like disciplinary actions you can take if a child is misbehaving as per your school? What is what can the teacher do? I know when I watch the you know foreign movies, there's detention and those mm -hmm. things. Like what, what do you do? Like here. Well, for primary schools, we don't tend to do detention because they're quite young. So we don't do detention. Well, it depends on the area as well and the school. But for us, we don't do detention. Um, the things that you can do, they're very limited, to be honest. The things that you can do, one of them is you can maybe take away break time or lunch time. So maybe you take away five minutes of their break time. When others are going out, they don't. So they can stay in and do some reading or something. Or you can send them to the head teacher's office. Um, or you can say, okay, I'm going to speak to your parents uh, to let them know your behavior today, that it hasn't been top notch. So it's quite limited, the things that you can do. It's very, very limited. Um, so it's either one of these, or you just um, speak to the head teacher, and then if it's something that she can step in and deal with, then she will step in and deal with it. We forgot to mention you have a YouTube channel, right? Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> I do have a YouTube I'm enjoying, channel. I'm enjoying your conversation, so I'm sure, like, <laughs> you're really giving a little nuggets on the channel. What do you talk about on the channel? 
<laughs> so my channel is more about teaching as well. So um, helping children with reading, things that you can do to develop your children's reading, and a little bit about uh, scriptures and things like that, sharing about God's word. And then um, when I went on a, I embarked on a keto diet, so things that you can do to, if you want to lose weight um, on a keto diet. So it's just mainly these three things I tend to focus in my channel. Wow. So I think not even those that want to become teachers, as parents as well, we can just follow you and learn how you yeah. are able to teach kids how to read. Because there's one mm. thing I really, I really, really want to do, like help my kids at home as well, mm. to, you know, on mm -hmm. top of what teachers are doing in school to facilitate yeah. the whole learning process. So yeah. if you are listening and you're a mother, you're a parent, you know, an aspiring mother or mm. a teacher, I'm sure you'd love um, Dwelling Oaks channel. I'll leave a screenshot here and I'll tag it in the description as well. So you can head over and then watch the videos that she has.